Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be looking at integrals of inverse trig functions. So um, actually this is really um, all formula based and so I don't, I don't know if that's good news or bad news but um, we're going to be working with three formulas, three formulas. All right, the purpose of this, this video is to help us understand that sometimes u substitution, the, the traditional u substitution that we uh, originally looked at, won't work for all integrands. Okay, and so then what else can we do if u substitution, in that sense that we first learned it and learned about it, if u substitution doesn't work, what's another option for us as far as finding an antiderivative uh, given an integral? All right, and so we'll look at that through some examples. But let's start by first looking at the three formulas that we're expected to uh, commit to our memory. If we can identify an integral such that when we do a little bit of changes to the integral, um, we get something of this format, du over a squared minus u squared all under a radical. Okay, if we can somehow take an integral and make it look exactly like this right here, then we know that the antiderivative is equal to one of the inverse trig functions. And we did study several inverse trig functions, six, uh, and from your memory you might perhaps remember that um, if you have a square root in the denominator and it looks something like this, that the antiderivative would be the arc sine. We were working with arc sine. So arc sine's derivative is uh, very, very similar to this. So the antiderivative here would be arc sine of u over a, and then plus the constant of integration if you have an indefinite integral. All right, formula number two. If we're integrating and we see that the traditional, if you will, u substitution doesn't work, but if somehow we could take the integral, do a little bit of calculations to it, get it to look exactly like this, that the antiderivative here would be another one of the inverse trig functions, and this formula right here most closely re resembles the arctan. But through the process of integration, one additional thing does show up on the arctan. So I'm going to leave a little gap here, arctan, and it is going to be u over a, plus c. So we're going to have to establish what u is and what a is, and we will. But that additional thing I was mentioning that wasn't up here on arc sine is a multiplier, a constant multiplier on this arc tan uh, function here. And that constant multiplier is the fraction 1 over 1 over a. All right, the third and final formula that we're expected to be able to utilize okay, looks something like this. Like the first example, you have another square root in the denominator, but you might want to notice the little change to the details here. Okay, this is the opposite of what I had under the radical here. This radicand is the opposite of this radicand. And additionally, you have a multiplier outside. So if you think about the inverse trig functions that we were working with, um, this most closely re resembles the arc secant function. All right, and so here the antiderivative is going to be arc secant. Notice I left a little gap here. Again, of u over a plus c. Two minor adjustments here in this antiderivative. One minor adjustment is this. We need absolute value around the u. And then the second adjustment is it also has a constant multiplier in front of arc secant, just like arc tan. So the only one of the three that doesn't have that constant multiplier is arc sine right here. All right, so um, why only three? Because as you may well remember from the derivatives of the inverse trig functions, um, we can um, combine, I guess you could say, we could combine uh, and make pairs. For example, if uh, this integral right here had a, happened to have a negative as part of it, well, sure, this would go back to arc cosine. But for me personally, instead of working with the negative in the integral, I'm going to pull it out front and then integrate as if it wasn't there back to an arc sine, but my final answer would have to have the negative. So it sounds like arc cosine is equivalent to negative arc sine. 
Same thing here. If I had a negative inside the integral, I'm not going to work with arc cotangent. I'm just going to pull the negative out front, integrate to an arc tan, and then bring in the negative. Likewise, arc secant, if it had a negative, I'm not going back to arc cosecant. I'm going to pull the negative out front and have a negative arc secant. So it makes it kind of a little bit easier for us, not as bad, you know, from 6 down to 3. All right, let's look at a few examples of using these formulas. In working with this integral, the first thing I'm always going to look to do is to use U substitution as we first learned it. Um, this is the traditional way. If I think about um, wanting to find an antiderivative for this integral, this derivative, okay, the first thing I'm going to think about is U substitution. Should, could U be 4 minus X squared? Well, the first thing I'd do is I'd be pulling up this square root as a negative one-half power. I'd be allowing u to be 4 minus x squared. That derivative would be negative 2x. But notice there's not x that's part of the integrand. So the regular um, u substitution, as we came to understand it, does not work here. So as an AB student, you know, what, what else do you do? If you're, if you're really needing to find this antiderivative and that u substitution doesn't work, then just try and dig deep in your memory and go, you know what, there was that inverse trig integral. Um, and um, can I work with that? And that's exactly what this is here. And all of these problems today, of course, we're going to be using the um, inverse trig the formulas that we just were given. All right, so how do we proceed? Well, the first thing you're going to want to do is if you realize that U substitution is out and you're going to go the inverse trig route, um, <laughs> you might want to rewrite the square root here, the radicand. Um, let's find in terms of squares uh, how we can rewrite this. So 4 becomes 2 squared minus, and x squared, of course, is just x squared. There's a method to my madness. Just be, just be patient. Okay. If I'm going to utilize that first formula that I had previous here, then I'm going to need to know what a is. Okay. Um, then I'm going to need to know what u is, and I'm also going to need to know what du is. So in this case, a would be 2, u would be my x, Okay, and my derivative of x would just be 1 or 1 dx. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to change over from an x integral to a u integral. So dx completely replaced with du. Nothing needs to be brought in. Okay, square root stays down here. Um, 2 is a, so a squared and x is u. So, and as you can see, this identically matches formula number one given previously. So I'm ready to find the antiderivative. It's arc sine, the angle or argument, you if you will, is x over 2, u over a, plus c. Okay, if I need to find an antiderivative for this integral, integrand, if I need to find an antiderivative, I first start in my brain with u substitution. Um, if u is the denominator, the derivative would have an x, but I don't have an x as part of the integrand, so u substitution is out. We need to begin to think about the inverse trig integrals. This one most closely looks like the arctan because there's no square root down here. So let me progress to that step where I, I get it to look identically to formula 2. So I need to rewrite 2 as a square. Square root of 2 squared plus 3x quantity squared would give the 9x squared. Okay, doing a little side work over here. I'm going to need to know what a is, which is the square root of 2 u would be 3x and du would be 3dx's. Okay, so I'm going to need to bring in a 3 so I can replace all of this with du and then so I'm going to need a one-third outside. Okay, so I've got a one-third integral. Let's go all the way back to a u integral. 3dx gets replaced with du. Square root of 2 is a, a squared plus 3x is u, u squared. All right, so um, we can actually integrate because this looks identical to formula number two. Uh, we're just going to take our answer and multiply it by one-third. 
right? So the one third comes along. Right. In the formula itself, it tells us that we end up multiplying arctan by 1 over a, so a is the square root of 2. And then we're going to have arctan of u over a, or 3x over square root of 2. Okay, as far as simplifying, you really don't need to rationalize here. You could rewrite this as a single fraction, 1 over 3 square root of 2. Otherwise, it's fine at this point. All right, attempting to use um, the traditional u substitution on this, um, it wouldn't work. Uh, if you allowed u to be the radicand, the derivative would be 8x, and x would have to be on top, and it's on in the denominator, so that's not going to work. Uh, you could try a few other things, but when, when it's all said and done, this actually is going to go back to an arc secant. That's the one of the three formulas that this most closely resembles. So now I know I have a plan. I'm going to try and take this back to arc secant. I know that I need to kind of work with the denominator a little bit. Specifically, the radicand. I'm going to rewrite 4x squared. This quantity 2x squared. And rewrite 9 as the power 3 squared. It's beginning to take on the look of the third formula given previous. Here's that a is 3, u is 2x, and du is 2dx. Okay, so it looks like I'm going to have to bring in a 2 here, which means out comes a 1 half. So we have the 1 half multiplier. Okay, this becomes du. Okay, x. I'm trying to figure out what x exactly um, needs to be replaced with. Well, right now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to use this expression right here. We're going to have to solve it for x. So divide both sides by 2, so u over 2 equals x. Right, so I'm going to bring in a u over 2 here. And then the denominator. 2x will be replaced with u, and then 3 will be replaced with a. Okay, we have a little cleanup to do right here. Okay, a little bit of cleanup right here. Uh, we want to get u by itself, and currently I'm dividing by um, dividing by 2. All right, so let's see if we can pull out this 1 half, if you will. So think of this as a 1 half. Okay, well, if I'm dividing by 1 half, that's the same thing as multiplying by 2. A little more work on this one to get this one uh, antiderivative. So I've got to pull out a 1 half. I'm dividing by 1 half. That's the same thing as multiplying by 2. So what happens is you end up with a 2 multiplier in front of the 1 half. Okay, and then it looks like we get the exact integral we need. Okay, and so if I swing back over here, um, these will cancel. I see that I'm in, I have exactly the formula I need, so this is going to go back to 1 over a, 1 third, arc secant, absolute value of u, all over a. I'm looking at the wrong problem. It's going to be 2x, isn't it? 2x over 3. So integrating uh, with inverse trig functions, three examples of um, how to go about, you know, setting things up so that it, it flows nicely and you can find the antiderivative uh, back to one of the inverse trig functions.